All right, thanks, Chris. Welcome, everybody. Uh, exciting week here uh, with Oklahoma State coming to town. Obviously, a really, really good football team. Um, played extremely well this year. All three sides of the ball, very talented, um, experienced football team. Um, it'll certainly be a, be a challenge for us, without a doubt. So it should be a, obviously an important game in the conference, as it has become over the, over the last several years. Uh, this year, certainly no different. Um, and uh, should be obviously a lot of fun here. Norman Saturday night. Uh, can't can't wait to play. Excited, you know. Certainly coming off the bye week and with the momentum we have as a football team, and and looking forward to you know a really really strong challenge and and the chance to play a great football team. That's it. We'll fire away with questions. Thanks, Coach. First question will go to Eric Bailey, the Tulsa World, and then Ryan Aber. Hey, Lincoln, Spencer got a taste of a rivalry game against Texas. As a, as a first-time starting quarterback, how did he handle the build-up build and blocking out the outside noise, and will that help him this week? I, I thought he was fine um, throughout it. I didn't think any of the good or bad, you know, that happened in that game was a result of the build-up. I just think, you know, like we've kind of said over and over this year, every every game, every scenario, every situation is a is a learning opportunity for for him and our whole team. And you know, I think he's learned. He'll get in some new situations, some different situations here Saturday night. And uh, you know, hopefully, the experience he's had through the years or through this year and uh, some of the situations he's already been in, he can he can draw back. Which I mean, the thing for him is to continue to just trust doing his job, to trust his teammates. Um, and uh, not make any more of it than what it is. And uh, he's done a good job that last several weeks. And, you know, we'll need that to continue here in this last stretch. You know, a quick follow. When you're recruiting a high-profile position like a quarterback, how much does that factor in, just the maturity aspect? You can't predict the future, of course, but when you look and study the quarterback, how much does that factor in to studying the maturity of that player? Oh, it's, I think it's definitely important. It's not always easy to gauge, uh, but it's it's definitely important of how they handle – you know, adversity, how they handle tough situations, just their, I think their overall competitiveness. Um, you know, are they somebody that, you know, in that arena, you know, wants the ball? Um, some guys do, some guys say they do, and uh, you can tell the difference. Um, but you no, know, he's a guy that doesn't, doesn't shy away from it. So, you know, I think you'll, I think you'll be ready. Thank you, Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ryan Aver, the Oklahoman, and then Joe Bettner. Yeah, Lincoln. Uh, what are the maybe the the biggest areas that Nick Benito has improved on uh, since last year? And and can you uh, maybe at least try to quantify the importance of the 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 uh, Nick's what Nick has done uh, to to what this defense is the success that this defense is having? Yeah, I mean, I think Nick was one of those handful of players coming in the season that that did a lot of positive things for us last year, but, you know, we felt like, you know, we needed him to take the next step and, and, you know, the, we, we put, you know, pressure on him and, and really pushed him to, to do the things necessary to take that next step. And I think the thing for him was, you know, it's, it's different being a role guy. And then all of a sudden you're, you know, one of the guys, it's, it's just a different type of responsibility, you know, and, you know, to give you an example, if you play, you know, throwing it out there, you play 25 plays in the game and you make two or three good plays and it's, you know, everybody's going to feel all right. Whereas, you know, when you're out there for, you start getting out there for a larger portion of the game, uh, you know, you're going to have more challenges come your way. You got more opportunities, but also, you know, more challenges come your way and you got to be a more complete player, um, you know, and, and I think he's, I think he's done that. I think he's played a lot stronger in the run game this year. Uh, I think his, his pass rush has, has improved his, his feel. Uh, when to set guys up. He's got um, a few new, uh, you know, pass rushing techniques, moves, strengths that have helped him become a, a more well-rounded pass rusher as well. So, um, um, and then I think some of the added weight uh, and strength that he's put on uh, has certainly made a difference in his game. Appreciate it, Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to Joe Bettner, the Norman transcript, and then Jason Kersey. Hey, Lincoln, uh, you talked about just the challenges that OSU presents and, you know, with guys like Chuba Hubbard, Tylen Wallace, assuming, you know, Tylen's good to go. But uh, can you articulate as a coach how difficult it is to game plan for what this OSU team presents as far as just kind of the options that they have and if that adds anything to your defense as far as motivation in a big rivalry game where, you know, they've got to go up against two of the better players in the Big 12? 
Yeah, no, I mean, I'd, I'd say three of the better players, you know, skill-wise. I mean, those those guys are all really, really good players. You know, they're all dynamic. Um, you know, I think where they present problems is just those those three guys can all, you know, can all win. And, uh, you know, the only way you can, you know, get a lot of people around all of them is, is to have 13 or 14 players out there, and I don't think they're going to let us do that. So, I mean, it's, uh, it, it's tough. It's a tough matchup. I mean, you know, Tyler coming back is, is obviously one of the best receivers in the country. Chuba making the decision to come back is, is absolutely one of the best running backs in the country. You know, and then we've seen, you know, the talent that, that Spencer Sanders is and how he's grown and matured and, and made a lot of big plays and big games for them. So they, that, that trio is as talented and as good as, as anybody in the country. Um, it'll be a big challenge for us. I mean, you know, and they not atypical of this game, but but no, there is certainly a lot of challenges, and you know, it, eventually you got to go. You're going to get in one-on-one -on -one situations with with all three of them at some point during the game, and you know, you got to you got to be able to win those, and that's uh, you know, that's that's a situation that they put you in. Thanks, Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Jason Kersey of the Athletic, and then Cliff Brunt. Hey, Lincoln, I know that you never go into a series expecting to punt, but in a game against a really good defense and a game where field position could be important, how important could Reeves Munchau be in this game? And how have you felt like he's played this year generally? Yeah, I mean, I, I hope it's not too important. Um, but no, I, I, I certainly understand the question. Um, yeah, no, it, it's, it certainly could be. I mean, you're playing a quality defense or, you know, they do a good job. And, and so... Yeah, no, I think it's I, I think it'll be important. Yeah, you know, Reeves has had some games where he hadn't had to be too busy. He's had against a couple of games where we've had to use him a little bit more. Um yeah, I think his I think his his good punts have been better um than, than what he was last year. You know, he's stronger. I think just as we watch the the number of punts we watched throughout the year, I think he's hitting the ball overall better. He's had a couple ones that got just away from him where, you know, last year he got a couple big rolls on those and, and the average was maybe even a little bit better. I honestly think he's hit the ball better this year. Uh, you know, done a better job of, you know, of locating the football where we want him to locate it. So I think he's improved. And, and then, you know, the fact that he's done this in a lot of big games and big atmospheres and big moments is a, certainly a plus for us in this game. Thanks, Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Cliff Bryant, AP, and then Bob Prisbillo. Yeah, uh, Coach, uh, what stands out most to you about how Oklahoma State has evolved defensively over the last couple of years? Yeah, I mean, they, you know, they obviously went with a, you know, a very different kind of mindset when they when they brought the new coordinator in a few years ago, um, and you can see, I mean, it's it's you could tell it's year three with those guys, and and, and you know, it's funny even. You, even over the years, it's we're playing the same players. I mean, just about. I mean, it's there's there's very few new faces, even from the first year that we that we went against those guys. So you know, you've got a lot of guys that are good football players, and they've grown in the system. and And I, I think the biggest thing you see is they just you know they're they look like it's year three. I mean, they they they're not making mistakes. They're on the same page. Uh, you know, and they've got a very experienced and very talented group, you know, that's been able to stay at least from, I don't know, from a, not from being in the middle of it, but it looks like that group's been able to stay relatively healthy because you turn on game film after game film year after year and it's all the same numbers out there. So uh, they're, they're really good defense. They've gotten better, you know, tribute to their, the coaching staff and the players there. Um, and they've obviously had a really, really, you know, tremendous year so far. Thanks, Coach. Let's go to Bob Chris Bill with Sooner Scoop and then John Hoover. Lincoln, going back to the second quarter versus Texas when you decided to sit Spencer, were you worried that he was going to lose any confidence or mope around? Like, What had you so confident that he was going to use that in a positive way? Uh, no, I wasn't worried about that. I mean, I you know, feel like I know who he is. Uh, I don't that thought didn't cross my mind at the time. Um, and if he was to mope or not handle it the right way, then then he's not the guy that should be, you know, our starting quarterback. I mean, that's just not a, that's not a quality that would, you know, help help us or help this team. And I think the starting quarterback has to have a, you know, not necessarily always maybe lowering your shoulder, running over guys, but there, there's gotta be a toughness and a mental toughness 
of the guy at that at that position uh, for your team to me to to have any of that and and so again whether they're a big dude and trying to run guys over or, you know even a small guy like Kyler that you know never got hit and slide every chance he got they're they're still just a there's a mental toughness and a mindset and a competitiveness that uh, that you have to have and uh, you know you got to be able to handle situations like that where it doesn't go your way. We'll go to John Hoover with SI Sooners and then James Hale. Lincoln, a real quick one for you. How Spencer, how was he last week? Is he 100% this week? Yeah, he's 100%. Okay, so what I want to ask is about it as a team or maybe even individually, how much do you still refer back to the early parts of the season, you know, in your self-scouting, specifically some of the, I don't know, teaching moments uh, against Kansas State, Iowa State, and whatnot? You've always been a guy that emphasizes positives. What I'm wondering is if the last few wins, do you still have to remind guys, hey, things can go sideways. Here's what you did previously. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we just call it for what it is here. I mean, I, you know, I've never been the guy that's going to stand up in front of the media and, and, you know, heavily criticize a player, this or that. That that doesn't happen now. Uh, you know, in our practices and our meetings, uh, sometimes a little bit different story. Um, we. We just try to be straight up with our guys. If they did something really good, we're going to tell them they did something really good. If they did something really bad, we're going to tell them. If they did something really smart, it's going to be emphasized. If they did something really dumb, it's going to be emphasized. I mean, for us, it's just the there's nowhere to hide mentality, both for both for us as coaches uh, and, and players. I got no problem when I screw something up in front of a game, Monday in a team meeting, showing the team where I screwed it up and telling them how stupid it was on my part. I mean, that's... That's just that's just our mindset, and so we try to just call it like it is. Uh, you know, we try to we try to certainly learn, but not dwell. Um, and you know, and and whether that was something good in the past, something bad in the past, or we we want to learn from it. Um, uh, because no, you never you never get there. You never there's not like some moment where you got it all figured out. It's just you know, hopefully you can take the lessons that you have and apply them, and just keep getting better throughout the year. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, James Hale, KREF, and then Joey Helmer. You know, Lincoln, Oklahoma State defensively, they're really, they've been pretty good defending the pass. So I'm wondering, you know, with their concepts and the things they use and the fact that their safety game is so good, if they make big plays, it's usually from their safeties on defense. Uh, what would Spencer have to watch? And, you know, what do you guys have to watch uh, to make sure that you can control those safeties and, you know, and, and throw the ball against them? No, they're good players. I mean, those two guys have been playing forever, and uh, they're you know they've really improved, and uh, they're they're two tremendous players, no no question about it. Um, yeah, and they do a nice job. They they do a nice job mixing up, getting those guys in the run game, but also keeping them very active in the pass game. Uh, you know, and it's a I think a credit to a, a, a nice job they do schematically, and then again just the quality of players that those guys are. They've, they've those guys have played a lot of ball, and they've seen a lot, and uh, and it shows up on tape. So. Um, you know, obviously, I mean, I, I think it's, I think it still comes down to, you know, winning your individual matchups. I mean, I think in a game like this where, you know, both, both teams, both sides, but I'm really both sides on both sides of the ball are, 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 are good. And, uh, so it can be a lot of really good individual matchups out there and, and, uh, you know, there'll be some opportunities because both teams are aggressive. There'll be some opportunities for big plays. Um, and, uh, you know, when you get those times, you got to cash in, especially against good defenses. Thanks, Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Joey Helmer, OU Insider, and then Garen Eamon. Yeah, Lincoln, you talked about Tylen being one of the best receivers in the country. Obviously, you guys have a, a ton of talented receivers on your roster. Uh, how can some of those guys help you prepare for a guy as dynamic as Tylen? Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, our, 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 our players are used to going against good receivers, um, you know, but I don't know anybody's exactly, you know, like, you know, can you carbon copy a guy, you know, his strengths, weaknesses, all that. Thailand doesn't have very many weaknesses. Um, I mean, as far as a skill set, I mean, the guy we have that's most like him is, is uh, you know, he and Trajan Bridges are, are – their games are very, very, very similar, remarkably similar in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, you know, yeah, our guys get to go up against good receivers, but you know, Tylen's tremendous and, and does some, 
you know, just he does some things very, very well that are that are difficult to defend. So, you know, I, I'm glad that our guys get to go up against good receivers, but it's, you know, it's going to matter what they do on Saturday night, uh, you know, and, and he's, a, like I said, we got a lot of respect for him, a tremendous player, and, and certainly have a lot of respect for the, you know, challenge of trying to, trying to contain him. Darren Emig, Tulsa World, and then Keegan Rennell. Lincoln, the situation at receiver for you, you got a lot of talent and a, a heck of a lot of potential there. Certainly not sure that you, you've got a, a Bolitnikoff award candidate this year just yet. Um, you don't have D.D. or uh, C.D. Lamb, Marquise Brown, guys who made such big plays and big games the last few years. Would you feel more secure going into this matchup as sound as OSU is in terms of the, its coverage? Would you feel more secure if you had that kind of guy out on the perimeter to help Rattler out a little bit? Um, I feel good about the guys we have. You know, they've, they've made a lot of plays, and I think we're getting better quickly, um, those guys included. Uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, you know, you'd like to line up with 11 Hall of Famers, but it just, you know, that's the nature of the beast is each year, you know, you have what you have, and I, I like what we have. I think we're, you know, we're, I think in the process of turning – you know, a lot of that talent and, and guys that are flashing and doing some really good things into really, you know, consistent and, and potentially elite players. And um, so I I like the progression we're on. I like the guys we have, and I think they'll be ready for their opportunity Saturday night. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Keegan Renault, Sooners Wire, and then Jenny Carlson. Yeah, Lincoln, after the Kansas game, you talk about how this team has had a bunch of fork in the road moments and they've chosen to go on the ladder, um, you know, to come together and do all that. What, how did how did you see this team kind of unfold this year? Was it, you know, was it the Texas game that really drove them? Was it after the Iowa State game and some of those personal meetings um, with the players and all that? Um, how, did, how did you see this team kind of come together this year? Oh, man, that seems like a question for after the season. I mean, I... I don't know that there's been like, at least up to this point, like some, you know, big Hollywood moment. I mean, it's each moment contributes to it. You know, the ones you'll notice more after adversity or those are, you know, I think the, the more obvious ones, but every moment from January on, you know, contributes to it. And uh, so we've, I think the team for the most part has handled the majority of what we put in front of them very well um, from from January on and all the different challenges that have come up and they've continued to listen they've continued to stay positive and they've continued to grow together and so I think those things have been I think the key to us you know starting to play some some decent ball here um, towards the end and 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 while we've been able to hang in there and put ourselves in position to make this a uh, a meaningful football game. So, um, but I think it's just been constant throughout the year. And, uh, you know, we'll have to continue to come together and, and fight and push to get better if we want to accomplish, you know, what we think we can here at the end. Thanks, Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Jenny Carlson, the Oklahoman, and then Lee Benson. Hey, Lincoln, you guys um, have won a string of games here in this series and have several guys on your team that have been part of those wins kind of speaks to the larger um, series um, excellence, I guess you guys have had as a program. How do you use hi history, that success historically and in the short term too, when, when in the last few years to your advantage? Is there a way that you feel like mentally you can address that with your guys and, and uh, you know, give them the most confidence heading into a game? I know each year is its own thing, but yeah. does that, can that work for you in a good way? I honestly don't know that it does. Um, I just – the games are so different, you know, and the matchups are so different, and there's different – you know, there's been different coaches, different coordinators, different guys at key positions. I mean, you know, it, it, there's just so much that changes year to year um, that – I mean, certainly, I guess if you had to, if you sat there and you had to choose, do I want more guys on my roster that have had experience winning this game versus losing? Of course, that. But I don't, you know, do you go into that and is something like that the difference? I, I, I have a hard time seeing that. I just think it comes down to how the team's playing at that point and the matchups on that particular Saturday and who executes the best and makes the big plays in the big moments. And, and uh, you know, this game has always been, you know, has always been competitive and it's uh it's always been important you know throughout every single one of them that i've been involved in has had 
you know, maybe been the most influential game in the Big 12 those seasons, uh, just about every one of them. And so uh, the quality ball has been good. There's been a lot of great players, a lot of them that are making plays on Sundays from both sides right now that, that have been a part of it. So, no, it's been a, it's been fun. It's It's been uh, – you know, feel fortunate that you know we've we've been able to come out in the upper hand, but it's you know that's not going to mean anything at 6:30 Saturday. I mean, it's going to take all we got to to you know to play at the level that we expect to play. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey Benson, KWTV, and then Barry Trammell. Hey Coach, I know you talked a little bit about uh, the COVID stuff yesterday on the conference call, but I figured to get you on the record today since I saw last night, uh, OU announced 20 active cases in the, in the athletic department. I know the positivity rate uh, has gone down compared to, to last week, so that, that's good. But I know you don't comment specifically on anybody in the program right. with the right. issues, but just today, just kind of wanted to gauge your feelings on if COVID's going to have potentially any impact on, on Bedlam this Saturday. Uh, well, I mean, we've done pretty good as a program. Uh, we we have. I mean, I, you know, you know, looking for. I need to knock on wood. I mean, you know, it's like we said all year. You're one test away from your perspective changing. Um, but we've had a stretch here since, um, what well, since the first three games it rocked us pretty good, and since then we we've kind of we've been able to steady the ship a little bit on the on the COVID side of it. Uh, you know, and that's that's been a positive. So uh, it hasn't, for us in the last several weeks, has not had a huge impact. Uh, but again, we're just, you know, we're kind of living day to day. And uh, so we've, we've got to keep our guard up and keep doing the best we can. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, let's go to Barry Trammell, the Oklahoman, and then Parker Thune. Yeah, Lincoln, before you got to Norman, what was your perception of this rivalry? Uh, it had a cool name. But until the last, you know, 15 years, it didn't have much of a national profile. Now it's got a big national profile. What was your impression of this rivalry before you got in the middle of it? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Oklahoma State, my earlier years in the Big 12 when I was at Texas Tech was really starting to, to take off, uh, you know, really starting to get better, really improve. You know, they got the – Obviously, the the different financial gifts have made a huge difference in their facilities, and you know, starting to get some really good players. And then, and then my years at East Carolina, you know, were some of their best years. Um, so, and obviously, I kept up with them more throughout that time, even though we weren't competing against them with with Dana being over there, uh, and and then a couple other guys that that you know, good friends with in the in the coaching fraternity. Um, so, yeah, I, I think as far as the rivalry itself, I think. You know, obviously studied it, watched it all those years that I was in the Big 12, and and you could see. I mean, you obviously knew the power that OU was, and you could see that Oklahoma State was really up and coming. And then, you know, got to watch some great games there through the years while I was at East Carolina. So I, honestly, to be completely honest, before that, my sense of the rivalry, I I wouldn't have been a great judge on that. I, that wasn't anything I really paid attention to, but you could tell it was really starting to heat up and become again, a, a more important game on the national scene and on the Big 12 scene uh, in my earlier years, and that just continued before I got here. Thanks, Lincoln. You're welcome. Parker Thune with SI Sooners, and then Chris Becker. Yeah, Coach, your defensive front has just been so strong, especially over the last three games, uh, but they're obviously facing uh, quite a challenge going up against one of the best running backs in college football in Chuba Hubbard. How confident are you and your guys to be able to contain Chuba on Saturday night? Oh, it's going to be a challenge. I mean, you know, because he can – you can stop him five times in a row and then, then you know, with this speed and, and, and combination of speed and power, he can pop one and, and, you know, make you forget about those five or six stops pretty quick. So, no, he's he's a he's a tremendous player. He's got a great feel for – for the run game, you know, great patience, and then and then just kind of knows when to go, and has a, a real gift for separating from people, um, and and is incredibly consistent. So um, he's a he's, he's a big time challenge for us. I mean, we have played well there, but you know, this guy's, you know, this guy's as good as anybody you'll play in college football. And final question today from Chris Becker of the Ocali. Hey, Lincoln, uh, I want to talk about Spencer Sanders a little bit. You know, having a guy who can run the ball, pass the ball, and make plays himself, how hard is that to contain, uh, you know, in a college football game? 
Yeah, really difficult. You know, it's uh, you know one of the toughest things to defend. You know, because you know you've heard defensive coordinators say it forever. You can you can cover down perfect. You can have everything right, and the guy can extend plays and either beat you with his feet or get into scramble situations. And it's and it's tough. And a guy's athletic as Spencer, it's you know even if you assign somebody to him, it's it's you know he's still tough to handle even one on one uh, because of how gifted an athlete he is. So. Um, no, he's a, he's a tremendous player. He, he you know poses a lot of problems for you defensively, and obviously doing a great job of it this year for them.